Hey guys, it's been a while since we've visited this property, but the time has come to review the third and final installment of the sci-fi epic simply known as Varcel's Vixens. You don't remember what happened the last two issues? Don't worry, the recap on the very first page is completely useless. I'll catch you up. Some kind of goat-cow mammary delivery system is hungry for power, for reasons we don't know. She hires a couple of mercenaries of various skills and levels of competence and call themselves the Vixens, and after trying to gain power from a dragon man, or maybe he was just a dragon, he instructs her to go to the planet Fringe to look for something called the Polyod, which will turn her into the Sword Bearer. She meets a rival would-be Sword Bearer named Bambi, but she and her goons are caught in a landslide that Varsal causes in order to stop a horde of zombies from eating her and her Vixens. Their unicorn friend Caladan got lost in the commotion, so they set out to look for him. Before we begin the story, I have one question about the cover. What the hell is up with Varcel's smile? I imagine she'd be happy with the knowledge that she may be getting closer and closer to reaching her goal, or hell, maybe even that sword just feels really good in her hands, but this? She just looks like a Joker victim. That or maybe she's not really all that pleased with whatever is happening off camera that would make her force that smile. Oh, God. Squamata's dancing naked while singing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Again. Come on, sweetie! It's time for us to go, okay? Our story opens, logically enough, on Chapter 4, Page 50. The Wilds of Fringe. Early day cycle. Local time. It's a futuristic setting in the future, which means that they've forgotten simple words like morning. The Vixens are searching for Caladan, but their efforts are fruitless. Trugdor suddenly shows up and insists that they continue their search for the Polyod instead of looking for their friend. Anyone else wondering why he couldn't just search for the Polyod himself all of a sudden? If I could, I would, but I can't! Varsel suspects him of keeping more secrets from her since he didn't tell her about how he sent Bambi on the same quest that she's on. Squamata accuses him of not being the most trustworthy, shape-shifting, morally dubious character he can be, which is met with a little friendly strangling to show how trustworthy he actually is. Stop it! Why should you care? This fool is just a hireling. I need my hirelings alive and unhurt. Gee, thanks, Varsel. After all of our time together, I thought we'd be friends or something. He lets her go and disappears with the last word about how Varsel still needs to find the Polyod, and Varsel suggests that maybe she should continue on her own for the safety of her friends. Grace Jones's mini-me says, screw that, there's treasure in them, Thar Hills. And Lola and Squamata agree that they're all in this together. So why are you standing around? Let's get to the ruins. Well, it shouldn't be that hard to get to the ruins. They're only on the next panel. Within said ruins, we see a mysterious figure trying to revive the... actually pretty good-looking remains of Bambi. You'd think she'd look a bit more oatmeal-y after her little accident. She comes around and discovers that her rescuer is none other than Caladan. He tells her that she's a zombie under his control, but I guess she still has enough free will to ask him how he was able to do this. I'm a necromancer. I do things like that. I was... so long as it served my purpose. Wait, what? He was what, doing things like that? What is he talking about? Oh, wait, my bad. We have another case of awkwardly placed word balloons. People read from top to bottom comic, not bottom to top. Anyway, he explains that he's being tested to be a sword bearer himself, which means that he too is looking for the Polyod. It would also appear that he was controlling the zombies from the last issue to try to find the Polyod for him. Your brains rot too fast. If you weren't so stupid, you'd have found the Polyod by now, and I would be sword bearer. You can't even describe the Polyod because you don't know what it is. You're stupid enough to send mindless zombies out to look for something like this. Later, the Vixens make their way to the temple allegedly hiding the Polyod, when Lola, who I guess has a nose for secret doorways, finds one almost immediately upon entering. Behind the door is nothing but a locked chest, which she proceeds to pick. You're going to a lot of trouble for nothing. Who would hide something valuable in the front hall? It's only a locked treasure chest hidden behind a secret door. Why would you think there's anything valuable in that? Caladan and a couple of zombie minions get the drop on them, and he uses his Paralyzer Ray on Squamata, trying to do some kind of Taekwon chicken move. Lemming decides it'd be more prudent to shoot first and ask questions later, but Caladan just takes it in stride. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! How are ya? <laughs> to everyone's horror, 
Caladan is actually a zombie himself. A zombie that maintained his intelligence and can control other zombies. Yeah. So that's why you've got no libido. Really? You come on to somebody and the only reason that they would turn you down is because they're dead? Points for confidence, I guess. After taking Lola and Leming out of commission, he decides to gloat to Varcel before pulling the trigger on her. Because that's what proper villains do, isn't it? Varcel, your fur is a marvelous color, but the skin would be a terrible fit. So is he supposed to be your stereotypical wizard trying to gain power, or is he supposed to be Buffalo Bill? I imagine it'd be kind of hard for him to order his zombie slaves around while demanding that it put the lotion in the basket. Varcel does the only thing one can do when confronted with a zombie who wants to wear your skin. She takes her sword and throws it right through his fucking head! I mean, damn, that was awesome! Why go through all this trouble of being a sword bearer? Looks like he got the whole sword bearing thing pretty well in hand. The rest of his zombie minions converge on our head stabby heroine, and she locks herself in before they can get her. She remembers that there's still the unopened chest that Lola was trying to pick open, so she just punches the lock into smithereens. I sure am glad that she remembered she could always do that. I love it when side characters are rendered completely useless. Not like it matters, since the chest has absolutely nothing inside it. And that does suck, but it could be worse. Could be one of those exploding chests from Ultima 8. Then Trogdor shows up to reveal that there was no Polyod, and that Varsel had the power to be a sword bearer all along. Yeah, apparently the whole point of pitting Varsel against Bambi and Caladan was to see which of them was the strongest, and therefore the most worthy of being the sword bearer. As a sorcerer of unknown power levels, was simply throwing an infinite number of zombies at them until only one remained not an option? Now Varsel's just gonna take the sword that she's earned and slice Trogdor in half for being a massive douchebag. The zombies start breaking through the wall, and Varsal demands that she be given the sword so she can deal with them. I thought you'd never ask. Hmm, yeah, you like that nice long sword in your hand? Oh, is that the sword? I thought it was a butter knife. Shut up! Actually, he gives her the sword by... Uh... Biting her neck? I don't remember him having to do that the last time he gave it to her. Or has he become so jaded in the last couple of days that he's dabbling in extreme kinks in order to get the sword up for her? I knew a fractured confusion when we melded. I was flooded by memories so rich, textured and intense that I believed that they were my own. My reality was drowning in Trogdor's past. And then I decided that I should carry on his legacy as Spider-Man for a while. Wait, what? What she actually sees is a single panel featuring someone's arm holding a snake, some kind of Navi woman with someone wearing a burqa, and a giant dragon looming overhead. Yeah. This is supposed to inform us about Trogdor's past that we weren't even asking about. What is the point of this? Foolish, fooling, fool! It ruins the mystery if I give all the answers, and I am far too mysterious for that. She comes back to reality as the zombies break in, but Trogdor is nowhere to be found. There was no escaping him. He'd possessed me. His power burned in my hands. His joy was in my heart. His bloodlust boiled in my mind. And his Smilex turned you into Harley Quinn, apparently. Also, I get how you're suddenly feeling this surge of power as he's possessing you, but his joy is in your heart? That sounds like you're falling in love with the guy. Oh, wait, you're Harley Quinn now. Of course you're gonna fall in love with a bloodthirsty psychopath. She raises her sword in an admittedly pretty badass splash page, then proceeds to lop off their heads or just slice them in half. So the zombies are all dead, but Trogdor will not be satisfied until he tastes living blood. 
She stops herself before she can run Lemming through, but Trogdor insists. This is your final test. When you fed me living blood, our marriage will be consummated. Marriage? I mean, I agreed to take you inside me and make you a part of everything that I do from now until the day I die, but who said anything about marriage? Marcel decides that if these are the terms for her to be a sword bearer, she doesn't want the title anymore. Trogdor doesn't take kindly to this, and throws himself right at Varsel's ambition and gall. She ducks out of the way, and uses Caladan's talisman of stasis to paralyze Trogdor, which is kind of clever, but I would think that his inertia would be enough for him to continue flying right through her. He says that she'll never get the power that she wants if she doesn't undo the spell, but she doesn't care as long as she has her friends. She frees the vixens from their own stasis, and they go back to the town where they sell the talisman to that pawn shop owner from issue number two. Marcel decides to keep Trogdor until he agrees to make her a sword bearer on her terms, and if he doesn't agree, she'll just continue to bash his head into the ground until he does. And so the comic ends with Varcel paying her vixens what they're owed and then some, since she wants to keep them around. We're gonna get paid to have all this fun? Too much! Actually, no. Not too much. In fact, this is the last thing that Varcel's vixens would ever appear in. I can appreciate what this issue is trying to do by giving Varcel a character arc where she realizes the value of friendship, but it doesn't really work when you consider that she has virtually no chemistry with any of her vixens, and it's kind of undercut with how she still hangs on to Trogdor on the grounds that she will convince him to make her a sword bearer. It'd be a lot more palpable if in her attempts to save her friends, Trogdor would be killed or left completely powerless. You could have had everything you ever wanted, Varcel. Why did you throw it all away like that? What can I say? I found something more valuable. My vixens. My friends. As it is, this issue didn't really do a whole lot to redeem the series, so there's only one thing left to do with it. No libido. Subscribe, like, follow, comment, share, watch more, more.